afternoon, Ange. Uh, to start with team news, are there any, uh, any issues going into this one? Uh, nothing, no change from uh, the last game, so uh, everyone got through it okay, and um, the guys who are out still, um, yeah, not, not available. How did James Madison come through his 20 minutes? Yeah, he was okay, he was fine, yeah, I mean... Probably could have, you know, got him a little bit more game time, but the way the game was going, I kind of put him on um, probably a little bit later than uh, he probably would have wanted me to. But um, he got through it okay. He's trained well, so he's he's ready to go. Is he pushing for a start tomorrow? Well, we'll see. I mean, look, we've obviously got three games this week um, after Friday and tonight and Saturday, so there'll definitely be some changes. It's just about sort of balancing up, um, you know, who starts and. You know, who's going to be best equipped for tomorrow night? And just on the team news front, with Papasar now out of the Africa Cup of Nations, do you know when he could be returning? Uh, I, 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 the latest I heard is that he should be back uh, tomorrow at some stage. So, uh, you know, disappointed for him because, you know, obviously Senegal were, were kind of, you know, had a real ambition to win the, the competition. But uh, he did well for him again. He's, you know, he's a key member and. Uh, you know, from our side, it'd be good to get him back and uh, should be fine for Saturday um, after arrival. And two days left of the transfer window, I've got to ask you, <laughs> is there any, do you think there'll be any more incomings, any players going out at all? We've seen um, a few links from younger players last couple of days as well. Look, unlikely, I'd say. Um, um, yeah, I don't see any incomings that... Outgoing's a little bit different because I kind of I'm not sort of totally sort of engaged with that. Other people are doing the work around that. Um, I, I'd say unlikely on both fronts without ruling anything out. And finally, for me, I know we haven't really had a chance to hear from you about Jurgen Klopp <coughs> leaving Liverpool. I just wanted to get your thoughts on that and to follow up on that for yourself, someone who's been managing since was it '96? I think you started. What's been the key to your longevity and what do you do to protect your mental well-being in such a high-pressure job? <laughs> um, people question my mental well-being, that's why I, I chuckle. Um, yeah, no, look, in terms of Jürgen, yeah, I didn't answer it the other night, which was uh, you know, um, probably uh, the kind of mental state I was in after the game, which, yeah, to be fair, it's probably a bit poor on me. I should be able to, to look past that. But anyway, um, he's, yeah, look, um, obviously, a, a, a shock to everyone in terms of um, you know, with you see what he's building again. He's rebuilt this side again, and uh, they look like they're uh, they're going to be a force. And um, he's just been such an integral part of um, you know rebuilding that football club, um, um, you know, back to the heights it, it, it was before. And um, you know, it's a, it's it's a credit to him and I guess all his staff, but especially to him because uh, you know to to go into a, a big football club and, and um, you know, rebuild it to the stature it used to be. It's not an easy task and he's done that. It is hard these days to stay at one club for a long time. I think that's, um, that's a tough one when you ask me about my longevity. I think part of that process for me has been moving on after, you know, three or four years or two years and you know, we're mostly done it after success, but I know how hard it is to rebuild after a, you've, you've done that. And I found for me it was always better that you know, I kind of move on at the time. That's how I felt, and I can I can see how when you stay at one club and you know you need to do one or two, maybe a third rebuild, it can be taxing. But like I said, he's he's done it. He's you know he's an unbelievable manager. He's, he's left an indelible mark, um, and I'm sure there's more to come. I'm interested to see how long the sabbatical lasts. Um, I'm kind of hoping it lasts for a while because it gives me hope that when I do, because I have those thoughts in my mind often, um, I've got a sense it just drags us back in. <laughs> but uh, I, I hope he does have the break that I think he deserves. Thanks, Angie. Hi, Angie. Good afternoon. Okay. Hey, good evening. Uh, Brentford away back in August was your uh, first time managing Spurs in the Premier League. <clears throat> Nearly six months gone. Is it fair to say that the team is reaching what you expected them at this stage, or probably even more based on the changes in the summer? Um, look, I, I think I think the other night kind of gives us a sense of where we're at a little bit um, in terms of our destination. Um, but in terms of our starting point, I think it's fair to say I, I really believe we have made progress. Um, 
both you know with the squad and and with our football um, the results you know sort of slowly inching that way as well um, so you know I think that's the key thing for me is that you know if we continue to make progress and, and continue to, to to develop as a team we develop keep developing our players and <clears throat> you know for us um, then that destination point which like I said the other night showed that you know we're a fair way off that um, at least there's there's you know uh, belief in us that we can we can bridge that gap at some point so um, so I think I definitely think there's been progress um, but I also know there's a long way to go. Brentford tomorrow at home we saw Ivan Tony's performance against uh, Forest recently how impressed have you been with his performance especially after the fact he hasn't played a competitive game for so long? Yeah, look, I think he's. Uh, I, I think he, he look. He's he's a fantastic player. But you can see just how important he, he is to Brentford. He changes that team almost overnight. Um, yeah, they've obviously been going through a rough trot in terms of results uh, in recent times, and they've had their own share of you know injuries. Um, but as soon as he comes into that team, he just gives them a different look, not just as a player, but in terms of his presence. And um, I thought you could sense that straight away. And um, <coughs> As you said, you know, credit to him after being out a long time. Obviously, he's not coming back from injury, so it's a little bit different. Um, you know, I assume that you know, he was working pretty hard at training, and I think that shows. But um, he definitely makes a difference to, to to Brentford, as he would, I think, with most sides, but particularly to them because you know, so much of their sort of attacking threat, um, you know, revolves around him. Even if there won't be any further new additions in this transfer window. <laughs> What is it that encourages the most when it comes to your current team, your current squad, Spurs? Just, just the, like I said, just the progress um, the players are making. Um, I, I've just seen real growth in a lot of our players from, like even from that first game. Um, you know, they're they're really developing. They're they, they're getting challenged every week and. I look at them and I just see so much more growth in them. You know, when I talk about you know. Obviously, Friday night was a reminder of the gap between us and, and the very best. I think we can bridge some of that gap with the players we have here if they continue to develop. You know, I can see them. You know, in the next couple of years, really, you know, um, developing into really top footballers. And I think that's the most encouraging thing for me is that you know, I've seen growth, but I see so much more growth um, in the bulk of our squad. Yeah. Hi, Ange. How are you? Good, mate. You mentioned that gap, and you mentioned earlier you're some way off the destination at the at the end of the journey. Um, how encouraged are you? You're actually on track for that. I mean, beginning of the season, would you have said after six months? Obviously, you'd still rather be in both cups, but the position you're in now is where you expect it to be. Well, I, I think I've said a few times. I don't, you know, I don't have I didn't have expectations. I don't. I certainly don't have a sort of timeline for these things. It's more just. Am I seeing progress? Am I seeing growth? And um, <clears throat> you know, I, I, I believe that you know we have uh, both as, like I said, the playing group, um, but also our football. Um, you know, it's constantly developing, and you know that 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 doesn't change. Um, you know, after Friday night, but at the same time, we 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 need to understand that um, you know nothing stands still. So it's not about trying to catch a a sort of stationary target, you know, other teams improve, you know, Man City will improve. Um, and so it's not just about trying to sort of hit a certain point. It's constant constant improvement. And if you don't accelerate that growth, um, it can still, it can always be a, too far away from you, out of reach. So, you know, we, we've we got to make sure that we, we, we stay really disciplined in, in, in you know, continuing to push our players and, and push ourselves to, to to try and bridge that gap as quickly as possible. I know in your career it's rare you go a season without winning a trophy, which will probably happen this year. But is top four now for you success? So we can't win the league. No, no, I didn't say that. Didn't well, you did. Well, I said it possibly. Probably, yeah. yeah. That's fine. That's okay. You're allowed to say that. That's all right. It's, it's not, it's not that. Don't worry about it. It's fine. Outside. That's I'll right. No, no, you're allowed to say it. Don't worry. You don't think we're going to win the league. That's fine. Yeah, you, no, just be strong on that. That's all right. No, look, I, I get you. Look, I understand that, and I get the question. And look, it's disappointing. It's disappointing that you know we're both we're out of both cup competitions, particularly with not being in Europe, because obviously you know I kind of addressed it before the game that you know supporters really you know really 
kind of crying out for, for some sort of success for them to, to experience at this football club. But as I said, I can't let that guide my course. And, and this year is still about us, you know, like I said, growing as a team, um, you know, finishing the second half of the year stronger than we did the first. If we do that, then we'll be in a good position, I think, to to, to continue to, to to challenge and, and, and you know, push this team along. And, um, yeah, that's our, that's our focus as much as, um, you know, obviously there's disappointment there that, <clears throat> like I said, we're out of another cup. But there's also a real sort of, um, you know, reminder to us that, you know, if we want to, as I said before the game, it's not just about, you know, winning one trophy. If we're going to compete at that level, the level we want to, then we've got sort of a lot of work to do. And finally, just going back to Jurgen Klopp, and you, football managers always say that, that it's a drug. And they, can, they can never walk away, they can never leave it, and that's why we see people like David Moyes at 60, Roy Hodgson in his mid-70s still managing in the Premier League because they can't ever stop. Do you, in a way, admire Jurgen for thinking, right, my energy levels are low, what have you, and therefore I, I want to take a break, I want to walk away? And... I'll admire him if he sticks to it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if I see him pop up in six months' time somewhere else, um, no. Look, I, I understand it, and and, and, I, and I do. You know, and, and to be honest, I know people kind of look for reasons. I actually, I don't need another reason apart from what he said that he feels like he's running. Out. I totally understand that. Like I said, I know how hard it would be, and people underestimate it. Obviously, I, I, I love the role of rebuilding sides. Um, you know, going in and, and sort of you know, building your team, but. Rebuilds within an actual football club are really, really challenging because, you know, you, you invariably get the same questions you got the first time and you think, well, I've already done it. Why do I have to explain myself again? But you have to explain yourself again. And, you know, it's why I don't think managers stay too long at one club uh, these days. You know, they're, 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 it's kind of rare that they will. And, and I can totally understand it. And, it, it, you know, credit to him that he recognised that because I don't think anyone would have questioned if he stayed on, you know, for as long as he wanted to, but um, I think you know he's he's got standards he's set, and you know he, he certainly um, you know he certainly set the highest possible standard. If and if he feels like, and I think he knows that we all know that unless you're all in, you can't maintain that. So it's it's a credit to him he's made that decision. Well, on the personal front, you always mentioned about moving your family around, not having one <laughs> particular house. You know, you're always moving, having things in boxes. That mm. that must be the most difficult bit. I would have thought. Oh, it's just a different, different challenge. And it, hey, look, it, you know, that isn't always by choice. It's just that you know, if I'd have moved four different clubs in the UK, we might have had a house. We mightn't be, you know, living out of boxes. But we've moved around the world, so it's a bit, it's a bit different. But um, yeah, look, I think it's just, it's just different for every manager the way they deal with these things. Ali. So kind of along those same lines, then. Obviously, this three, four year kind of pattern almost that you've had in your career that you said earlier. Is that something that would put you off changing that pattern because of the constant need to rebuild within a club constantly? I don't know. I think again, you just address those things. Like ultimately, it just goes with how you feel. You know, at the time, I and mean, that's what I've always done. I've just, you know, if I felt that, you know, it was time for me to move because it was another challenge that I really like and enjoy, I've, I've made that decision. I, I haven't based any decision I've made in my career around sort of security or contracts because. I've probably left secure positions for unsecure positions because that's kind of how I am as a person. And I know that's when I kind of work my best, but, you know, whether that changes over time, I, I don't know. But I've never sort of preempted that stuff or, put again, put any timelines to it. If it could be two years, it could be three years, it could be four years, it could be longer than that, I don't know. But I've always moved when I felt that there was another challenge there that kind of I thought would be a best fit for me. Back on your squad, obviously three games in eight days. Romero and Van der Ven haven't played a lot of football in the last few weeks. Could we see Radu Dragosian maybe make his full debut across this week at some point? No, I don't know. I mean, it's uh, you know, what we're going to try and do is win these two games, and I'm going to put teams out there that I think will win the games. Um, that's that's always my focus. It, it's not about sort of you know trying to pre again preempt things about uh, <coughs> you know whether one plays or doesn't play. Um, we'll put out a team tomorrow night. We believe can win us a game of football and then I'll address that after that and see what we need to do for Saturday. And uh, Manor Solomon, where's he at in his kind of stage of coming back? Has he done any kind of training? Or? He, he, he's had a couple of games, but he's had, it's fair to say, he's had a couple of setbacks. He had one this week as well, so we just he's getting sort of further investigation on it, um, I think, early next week.
Charlie to finish the session, please. <coughs> just, oh, I'll just wait for the microphone, sorry. There you go. I just wanted to ask you, you talked about in the summer how it was quite an unusual window, no sporting director. How different has it been this time around with the new structure that's in place? Um, yeah, it's been a little bit different in that, you know, I think I've been sort of less involved than I probably was in, in the summer, um, fair to say. And, uh, you know, it's it's good. And obviously the, the, this window is a little bit trickier because I have games, you know, in the summer there's no games, so I can sort of totally sort of put my energies or if I needed to put more energy into that side of things, I could. But um, obviously we've had games and... You know, with Johan there and uh, his group, you know his his group of um, people working alongside him, um, it's just it's just meant I've had to do I've had less involvement in a lot of the sort of preliminary stuff and you know my role kind of stays specific now to probably what it should be around you know the final decision. And now, obviously, that was quite unique. But this system, how does that compare with your other clubs? Is it kind of fairly similar? Are there big differences? Uh, yeah, look, it's but you know everyone works differently. You know, Johan works differently to, to others, and you know I've always, like I said, me, I, I've always found it, you know, as long as you're working with sort of good people and we're all aligned, irrespective of the setup, you can usually get good outcomes. Like I said, the, the one non-negotiable for me is I get final say. That's the only thing I kind of insist on, irrespective of, only because I, I believe that the responsibility should lie with me as to you know. Um, you know the, that decision because I'm the one that's um, you know going to put the final decision into the place it needs to be. So, but aside from that, I you know um, they all work differently. But you know I've I've enjoyed working with Johan. Obviously, this is his first window in his team, and um, you know I'm sure going into summer we'll all be in a real good place to to make sure that again we try and take advantage of the fact that we can make our, our, our squad and our team stronger for what's ahead. You mentioned there about the challenge of a rebuild is that you're kind of having to do the same things and answer the same questions. How hard is it as a manager when you know, things that may have worked really well in one place suddenly aren't working so well and you have to adapt, but a part of you is saying, but this has worked before, you know, you, you adapt to me kind of thing? Um, I'm not really sure. I mean, I, it, it sort of, well, I, you know, again, it hasn't sort of happened to me. I, the, the constants I've taken with me in terms of rebuilds are still there. I still think there are certain fundamentals that, that do work. And it's more about, you know, trying to convince people within the organisation that this is the way to go. Um, because obviously, <coughs> when you go into to a new place, there's, there may be people who've been there for quite a while, um, who've probably seen, you know, four or five of me come along and with new ideas and, you know, rightly so, they may be a bit sceptical or reluctant to, to sort of... So it's about trying to, you know, um, get everyone on board um, with your ideas as much as whether it works or not. I mean, I, I have no doubt it works. It's just, I know it'll only work if everyone's aligned to it. Have you ever not had uh, No, no. And I, I, look, I, I don't want to make it sound like I'm, you know, well, this is what I want and I get no. It's just that, you know, sometimes um, it may come down to, you know, the club saying, look, we really like this guy. And, you know, if I feel like it's going to fit, then, you know, I'll, 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 I'll certainly make a decision. But if I don't, if I feel strongly about it, then, then you know, I'll, I'll, I will sort of draw a line there. Because ultimately, like I said, it, it, it's a waste of a club's resources if, if me, the person who, who's going to be kind of at the forefront of everything that happens after that decision, doesn't believe in, 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 in the decision we've made. But more importantly, I'll, I take ownership of it, you know, you know, and if I'm going to take ownership of something, like I said, I may as well have had the final say, because I'm not going to take ownership on something and, and, you know, in my mind I think, well, it actually wasn't my decision, and that's that's more on me than anyone else. Chris, I've seen about two players in the squad, Pierre-Emil Hoyer, his, his lawyer, came out yesterday saying he wants to stay. Uh, first of all, how happy are you with, with him that he's staying? And then also, Brian Hill... He's someone who's been here a while, been out on loan, there have been questions from the outside whether he's up to it physically in the Premier League. Mm -hmm. He hasn't played regularly for you, but he's still here. Do you think he has a long-term future? Um, look, I think with all the players, I, I kind of I, I kind of look at it the same way. Is, you know, as much as I'm sort of the steering the ship, they also have their own 
you know, it's, and I speak to players about this all the time. It's it's their careers, and they've got to do what they feel is right for them as well. And look, from my perspective, I need a strong squad. You know, and and all right, maybe this year without being in Europe and obviously being out of the cups, the the games now are limited between now and the end of the year. But if we want to get to where we want to, then again, I compare us to you know the other clubs that we want to try and challenge and. They've got big squads. They've got some pretty good players not starting. I look at it every week when they make substitutions. I'm, you know, So that's what we've got to get to. So you know, whether that's Brian or Pierre, who, who maybe probably feel they should be playing more, if they made a decision that, you know what, I, I need to go somewhere else to play, it's not like I'm just going to leave that ball. I'm going to replace them with somebody, again, who I think is going to be a good enough player to play in the Premier League, but maybe won't start because you need that. You know, and um, But, you know... Pierre's played the last two games, you know, and I think he's probably played just about every game this year, I think, at some point. He hasn't started a lot, obviously. Um, and Brian sort of, you know, he's had a couple of injury problems earlier in the year and he probably hasn't played as much as he'd want to, which, which, again, I understand. But ultimately, I've got to try and build a squad here that's going to challenge. And that's only going to happen if I've got, you know, 20, 22, 23 players who are all of Premier League standard. Um and that will mean that if it's not Brian, it's Pierre, it's two other players who will come in and maybe aren't playing as much. And then, um, you know, it doesn't, but that doesn't mean I don't rate them or I don't think they're up to the standard. It's just that you need a squad in this. And we've seen it more than anyone with the injuries we've had. Just finally, back to Jurgen. Man City and Liverpool. Just <coughs> over the Premier League and recent memory and Pep and Jurgen being critical to that. Saw before what happened Man United when a legend, legend manager left. Does this potentially open the door for more competition? Um, yeah, well, well look, I, I think with those kind of things, it just depends. It depends on 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 everyone else. Um, because the one thing you know, you know, managers and, and people like Pep and, and Jurgen, they're not going to stand still. So, like I said, it's not like it's a stationary target you're trying to hit. They're going to keep pushing the envelope to be better and improve, and it's up to everyone else to kind of match that and, and get up to that and, and try and exceed it and not shy away from the challenge. And, um, you know, I think, yeah, they've been very, very dominant teams for, for quite a while now. Um, but, you know, there's only one way to break that cycle, and that is for others to to rise to that challenge. It, I just don't see them coming back to the field. I just, you know, even with Jürgen going, I still think there's a, there's, a, there's a really strong squad there, really strong mentality. I'd be very surprised if whoever takes over, you know, doesn't continue to build on that. Um, so, yeah, um, I always think with those kind of things, it's it's, it's up to the, the challenges to, to change the status quo. Um, you know, and that can only happen if you... You know, if you have that sort of desire and 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 will to 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 challenge that and 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 not feel or be afraid of falling short, because ultimately, if you don't, then they're just going to keep winning. Matt, and Shani, um, if that is you done in the transfer window, are you, are you happy with what you've been able to to do? Yeah. Look, I you know we obviously had a couple of clear objectives for sure, and 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 part of that was to try and do it early because, you know, even now I can see already that, you know, Timo's played a couple of games, Rudd is <coughs> really settled in really well. So, you know, you can imagine if, if we were signing him sort of now in the last couple of days, probably need a week or two to get him up to speed. So, <coughs> you know, I think every window you kind of measure it on, well, are we coming out of it stronger than what we went into it? Um, and, and I think we have, you know, we definitely... You know, benefit from Radu uh, and Timo both in the short term, um, but even I think longer term and, and more importantly, and um, I think that's the measure of any sort of window. And we haven't lost anyone significant, so from that perspective, we've you know, got a couple of good loans out of it. Ashley Phillips, uh, Alfie Devine going to Plymouth, both those boys. So I think I think it's been a productive window for us. And, and what projections do you have on? On the next window, the big talk about this window is not a lot's happened. There's been quite yeah. a bit of inertia for various reasons. Yeah. Do you think that's a, a sign of things to come? Do you expect? Yeah, hard to say. I don't know whether this is um, <clears throat> the new world and um, 
you know, obviously there's some financial sort of uh, parameters now that are kind of dictating how these windows work. We might have to replace you guys with, uh, you know, the finance section of your uh, <laughs> organisation so we can explain to people uh, why the transfer window is so quiet. But it may or may not, I don't know, maybe just, just the people are sort of, you know, um, looking for the summer window to make significant rather than sort of something short term. Um, so, but it may be, maybe, you know, and I think, I just think the way clubs are kind of working is changing. I just see it, you know, there are some more strategic decisions. I've seen, I think you're seeing less, not panic buys, but kind of desperation just to bring anybody in or just to buy someone. I think clubs are just being a little bit more strategic now in, in these kind of moves. And, and I also think that, you know, there's very little secrets out there like if, if, if I reckon if you went through all the Premier League clubs and could somehow snatch their list of 18 to 21 targets I don't reckon it'd be a lot of difference between all of them you know because there aren't many out there now that so that's changed things a little bit as well so I think everyone's just a little bit more cagey and strategic will that last maybe I don't know um that's certainly the indication I get at the moment if you Yeah, yeah, no, it, it, it certainly, look, it, it helps and I think it's a credit to the club that we've got ourselves in that position, but that's not what clubs are measured by. They're measured by other things. George? Um, yeah, hard to say. I, like I said, I, I think there's real growth still in this group. I really do, and it depends on sort of, and that's why these next this second half of the year is going to be really important for us um, to see how much we can push these guys to to finish the season strong. And if we get a really strong finish, then you know there's a lot of guys who, <clears throat> you know, don't forget, are probably in their first or second year of Premier League football, where you go, okay, well, there's, there's some real growth there, which I think will help us in building the squad we want. Um, but I, I still think there's a way to go. You know, I still think there's, you know, when I, I kind of look at where we're at um, to where I, I think we need to be in the next sort of year or two, um, there's still a way to go. And that's why I think you know, every window is going to be important for us um, if we can sort of, <coughs> you know, improve, improve the quality of, of, of the squad and, and also you know, like I said, develop our players and um, we'll get to that point quicker, but there's still a long way to go. And you're this is a project and you know, overnight, I guess this year the news and perhaps contract things expire in 2025, it doesn't become a new deal, but is there kind of a real feeling, I guess, amongst the sort of top six that you need to be ready to pounce? Because even if they do bring in a quality manager, they can still be transitional kind of periods. No, again, like, that's what the kind of I guess that's the point I was wait, making before is if if that's your only hope, waiting for the top ones to slip, I just don't I don't think you get there. You know, I'd rather them be at their best and we match them, we get up to that level and exceed it, than hope that they slip up. I just don't think that's a strategy. I think that's more of a wish. Um, like I said, we we got a real good indicator the other night that you know they're still. And look, to be fair to the lads, we, we hung in there and we fought hard, but you know, we we're playing against the I think probably the best side in the world at the moment and, and there was a difference between us for sure. Um, but if we're hoping that they come back to us rather than us trying to get to their I think you you're chasing a lost cause. Yeah, it was. It, yeah, yeah. Fair to say, it was. It was a challenging week because of there were so many unknowns and uncertainties there. You know, you, you kind of you want to start the season on a on a, you know, on a positive note, and you know when you know you lose you lose arguably the club's 
greatest player on on the eve of it, and you're not sure about the impact. Who's going to step up? Who's you know how the players are going to react? We're playing differently. We're putting a different lineup. I think you know Vicario, Destiny, others were making their debuts on the day. It was you know it was a, and you know, Brentford away is a tough game anyway. Um, so there was a lot of uncertainty, but that was the exciting bit as well, just to see sort of you know how we developed and. Uh, I think even the start of the game, there was no running water or something. We delayed it for 20 minutes. It's bizarre. The whole thing was just like, I've gone, I've just destroyed the whole Premier League just being here. Um, so, yeah, it, it was. But like I said, that's the exciting bit. Different now. Yeah, it's a challenge now. But there are more knowns for me anyway. So, um, but, you know, the, the, the sort of, <clears throat> the fire hasn't diminished. You know, I still, I still really believe that, you know, we're, 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 we're building something here that... Um, Hopefully, we'll get us to where we want to very quickly. We'll finish with Dan for 12 o'clock tomorrow, please. Uh, <coughs> similar line of questioning, but when Klopp came to Liverpool in 2015, it, it really did feel like Spurs were ahead of them. They had a lot of building blocks in place to really kick on. It didn't happen, and then Liverpool did kick on. I, I think the stadium build is probably accepted as the sort of biggest reason for that. But now, when you look at the clubs, do you feel that you do have every necessary building block in place you know, financially? Oh look, I think there's 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 a good foundation there, but do I think we're where we want to be off the field as well? No, from a football perspective, anyway. I'm talking, just I, I just think well, it's, it's the nature of rebuilds in my experience. You know, they don't happen in six months in terms of you know the way you work, the staffing, um, the environment. You know, we're, we're, we've made inroads, but it's not... I, I definitely don't think it's it's ingrained or established in here yet. And it can't be after six months. I'd be a fool if I thought it, it was, you know. Um, you know, you talk about Liverpool or Man City or Arsenal. It didn't happen for them in the six, first six months. So there's no kind of, you know, waving of a wand here. So I know that that is not where it needs to be yet. But we do have some things that are definitely, you know, in terms of... Facilities, resources, um, absolutely, we're well placed. But again, all those things, you're well placed, but you've got to take advantage of it. You've got to use it well, you know, because again, it's not it's not the measure. The measure is not how well placed you are, it's how you execute. And you know, I still think <coughs> with all those things, we're still in the building phase. We're not in the phase of saying that, you know, we're ready now to sort of catapult ourselves to where we want to be. Is that kind of just behaviours? Need to be ingrained, or is that more appointments behind the scenes? Both, yeah, both, yeah, behaviours, appointments. Um, it comes down to people. Mm. Uh, they sort of cover both things, but yeah, we, we, we need to, you know, like I said, when you look at it, you know, <coughs> I've been here six months, I think Scott Munn's been here six months, um, less, sorry, um, Johan's been, you know, two months. So when you're looking at, you know, the football side of things, all of us are kind of just getting started um, it's key obviously that we, us three are aligned in what we want to do from a football perspective but I'm sure in their areas they're kind of looking at the same things and saying well we need to so until that's done and that can only happen over the course of time you know like I said that's when you'll you, you know, you'll feel a bit more secure about then saying okay we can go to the, to, to the next level and, and our understanding is that um, Fabio Pratici is still working for the public kind of consultancy role and how involved are you with him day to day? Do you talk to him? Does he have an input in kind of who you're going after? No, I mean, again, I, I don't have a lot of dialogue with too many people. Um, I kind of, it's the way I structure my, my working life in that, you know, I kind of keep these things to a minimum. Fabio, obviously, um, I know Fabio and, um, you know, every now and then we'll we'll exchange uh, messages or calls and uh, he's a smart guy he, he, you can see that he's got a great eye for talent but within the workings of the club and what I do you know I don't have that kind of engagement not just with Fabio but with most people it's 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 more around you know um, what's the priority right now this week and you know my focus is on the football and the football department did you enjoy that? There's so much more, so why not hit subscribe and download the Optus Sport app.